Hello everyone, welcome to part 3 of creating a digital audio synthesizer using C Sharp. In this part, we'll be adding even more to the synthesizer we've been developing by adding multiple oscillators to allow a range of new sounds to be synthesized, which will also include an audio mixer that will allow all the audio generated by the oscillators to be combined into one waveform. So looking back at the synthesizer we've developed so far, it seems like we could just drag more oscillator controls into the form, and once we press a key, that all just play the sounds, the mixed so obviously we have a sine and a square, it'll play the mix between them. Because of this for each loop here, it says for each oscillator in the controls. But that's not the case for several reasons actually. Because if we look at the for each loop, or the end of the for each loop, the scope, we only play the audio once the, the for each loop has come to an end. So we've looped through all the oscillators. And this wave and the point of time is an equals, so an assignment meaning that it'll synthesize the samples for the first oscillator, but then say there's another one, it's just going to override all the samples and produce that waveform. So what we'll eventually end up with is just the audio from the last oscillator in the collection of the controls. So the way we get around this is mixing audio, mixing the samples of audio. Now we do this by synthesizing all the audio and from all the oscillators, and then finding the mean of each sample in the same point of time. So, say we have three oscillators that are on, we'll just have three sets of audio, and then we'll process them down into one, so the mean of all those three. So to demonstrate this simple process, I've just created a little table in Notepad, and on this table, the x-axis is the point in time of each sample, and the y-axis is the oscillator and the mix, so the wave, what type of wave we're looking at. So say oscillator 1 is a, well I don't know what type of wave this would be, but say it produces these three samples, 10, 20 and 8, then oscillator 2 produces these samples, 20, 40 and 10. We now need to mix these to produce a final waveform that can be played. So again we just have to find the mean of these values, so the mean is all the values added together divided by how many there are, so this will be for point in time of 0, 10 plus, 30, 10 plus 20 is 30, divided by 2 is 15. So that's the mixed mixed audio from the point in time of 0. And so we move to the next sample, 20 plus 40 is 60, divided by 2 is 30. And for the last piece, uh, 8 plus 10 is 18, divided by 2 is 9. So say we add a third oscillator with another layer of samples, we just add them all together and then divide them all by 3, because again that's the mean. So the way I thought about implementing this system originally was to loop through every control or every oscillator in the form that was on, and during the synthesis I'd actually assign a new array, so make the wave array a two-dimensional array, and for each oscillator that's on, assign a, a sub-array inside of it to contain all the samples, and then once we've looped over every oscillator, we'll then loop through every sample of every array and just to calculate the mean. Now that's quite inefficient because what you can actually do is just do the mean on the go. So instead of looping through or synthesizing all the audio, then looping through all the samples again, we can skip the whole sort of the idea of the mixer bin here and just put the mixer inside of the synthesis. So the way about we we'll go about doing this is obviously we need to find the count of how many oscillators are on. So simply remove this from here and create a collection up here. So a new I enumerable of the type oscillator. We we'll just call it oscillators, and it'll set to be the collection of the oscillators that are currently on. And we also want to define an integer. We can call this oscillators count and we'll set it to oscillators, or the count of oscillators. We're doing this up here so we don't have to calculate or perform the count method every time for every sample we want to loop through, because that would just be inefficient. So we'll create just an integer up here, and then we'll just simply put for each oscillator in the oscillators we declared before, and then we're going to encapsulate every single, every, the return value, so the original algorithm, and we're just going to encapsulate in brackets and then divide it by the oscillator's count. 
So this is basically, it's just it's substituting, creating a mixer at the bottom. So oscillators count again because it calculates the mean on the go. And the temp sample divided by the oscillators count. We don't have to encapsulate this in brackets because it's just one variable, same for this one. Oscillators count. And the final one, just divide it by the oscillators count. We will have to put this in a convert dot to short, so to in 16, sorry. And we can remove the cast. And we now have mixed everything, but remember as I stated before, this assignment operator is basically just overriding everything. So it's say we divide the first oscillator, so the waveform of the first oscillator by two, if there were two oscillators on, it'd just overwrite it override it on the next oscillator. So to get around this just put a plus equals. So it's adding all the values together. So on all the convert dot in sixteen just put a plus. And now let's drag another oscillator onto the form. So oscillator two here, we should probably also rename them just so we know which ones are which. So oscillator two and oscillator one above because we got rid of the names when we first put the first one down so oscillator one and now let's try synthesizing some new sounds so let's try a combination between sine or just sine and sine first so we know that's the sine wave we used to what happens when we get a sine wave and a square wave that's different uh, sine and saw sine and triangle and now we can mix and match and make some all sorts of new sounds now I've got these two oscillators now there's so much more so many more different combinations we can make but when we add a third one we're going to get even more so oscillator 3 We'll extend the form a little bit to fit oscillator 3 and now let's see what happens when we combine a sine, square and saw wave. That's a lot different, it's kind of a laser sound. And we just have so much more variety now with three oscillators over one. And that is just all because of the mixer and calculating the mean of each sample that we can now combine all the all the sounds of each waveform into one just perfectly mixed sound that sounds completely unique from just single waveforms. And it gives us so much more different mixing options and it's just a much more developed synthesizer now. Now we've got three oscillators. And the last thing I want to do for this part of the series is to add a way of telling the synthesizer which oscillators you want to synthesize audio with. So say you just want a, a sine and a square wave to be mixed on the two oscillators, but you don't want a third one that's going to have a waveform mixed into it, so not create the sound you want. We can simply add so sort of checkboxes here, so if these are checked, I'm going to be synth synthesizing audio with these two and not the unchecked third one. So the way we can go about doing this is adding a new control. So this dot controls to add and make sure it is under the for each loop because we don't want these properties that are for the buttons been assigned to the checkbox so we can add a new checkbox the control and we'll assign it some properties so the first one we want to be the name so just call it something like oscillators on or oscillator on and give it a location we want it to be in the top left so not the not where the buttons are, but just at the other side. So something like two ten, so directly the other side, and about the same height as the top buttons. So something like ten, so it's at the top. Uh, size we want it to be sort of smaller than the buttons. So something like forty thirty, a bit thinner than the buttons. And we want its text to be on, so we know it's a what it's going to do. So it's going to tell us that the oscillator is going to be on or off. And we can assign the default value of checked to be true. 
so it's on by default now to we actually use this it's going to be private to the form itself so we can actually we won't know what oscillator is on so we're simply going to add a property in the oscillator type it's going to be a public bool and we'll just call it on and what it's going to return is we can go to this dot controls and we're going to index the control collection for the checkbox we've created so oscillator on and of course we need to cast this so we'll cast it to a checkbox and now we're going to put controls dot checked now this will return whether the the on button or the checkbox we created is actually is ticked so if we want it on or not then to all we have to do here is create a a where a where method an extension and for each oscillator in the controls of the type oscillator it'll pay up to be assigned to the collection it'll be returned if it's on so using this link query here and now let's try this out so when we start it we've got the three on buttons here and say we just want sign just sign say we just want sign and square and now say we want all three and now we can state which buttons we want on or which oscillators we want on and we can leave any out that we don't want synthesizing at that point in time so this has been the implementation of multiple oscillators in the synthesizer and a way of explicitly stating which ones we want to be synthesizing audio at a point in time that leaves the synthesizer nearly complete and we only need to add a few things like oscillator parameters which are, I'm planning to cover in the next part so stuff like the octave offset where we can differentiate the frequency we want each oscillator to be running at so not just the key press which will set the frequency of all the oscillators and after that it's probably visualising the audio which I'm been quite excited for uh, again that will be coming in future parts this has been part 3 of creating a digital audio synthesizer using C-sharp. I hope you've enjoyed and are learning lots from this series, and if so, please leave a like and subscribe to stay updated with all the content I'll be producing in the future. Also, visit my Patreon to discover all the non-tutorial content I create, which for now includes mods for games, but I have so much more planned in the future. Link is in the description, and I'll see you in part 4.